Hey there, this is Nick with another Builder Trend tutorial. Today we're going to talk about syncing QuickBooks and Builder Trend together. It's a topic we've covered before, but I want to talk about the right strategy for ensuring we're entering the information in the correct place. I have a really strong opinion on how this should be done. I'm going to share that with you and show you exactly how it works. Now, reminder, we have a video, a how-to video on how to connect Builder Trend to QuickBooks Online. That is helpful for understanding this video. That's an old one, but it's still really, really relevant. Let's get into today's topic, though. And as a reminder, Builder Trend syncs with QuickBooks. It's a two-way sync, which is nice. It's an improvement that happened about four years ago or so, which is awesome. It syncs with a couple specific areas. First is job. So a job in Builder Trend equals a customer or a project in QuickBooks. And the second one is a cost code. A cost code or a cost category in Builder Trend syncs with a product or service in QuickBooks. So setting this up is important. It's essential. So doing that is the first step. And again, I have a how-to video on that and how to connect your jobs to your customers, how to connect your cost codes to your product or service. That's the first step to ensure that the two can talk to each other. What this video is about is how they should talk to each other because we can add expenses to either system. We can add expenses to Builder Trend through bills. We can add expenses to QuickBooks through bills or through expenses. And which one should we be using for our projects? I'm going to talk through exactly my strategy for that today. So there's two-way sync between BT and QBO. So what should we use? All right, so here are the items that can be transferred between the two systems. First, Builder Trend bills will go to QuickBooks bills. That's a one-to-one -one sync. Builder Trend bills, something that gets created in Builder Trend, can be sent to QuickBooks. Second, a QuickBooks bill can be sent to a Builder Trend QuickBooks cost. Okay, that's an important distinction there. So if we record a bill in QuickBooks, meaning I'm going to go to the bill portal and say I have a bill, something that I owe to somebody, it's going to be recorded in Builder Trend as a QuickBooks cost, not a bill. Okay, very, very important to understand that difference there. If I report a QuickBooks expense, so an expense in QuickBooks, not a bill, something that's paid at the time of purchase, a credit card transaction, a bank transaction paid at the time of purchase, okay, that's going to record as a Builder Trend QuickBooks cost as well. A QuickBooks purchase order does not link to Builder Trend, and a Builder Trend purchase order does not link to QuickBooks. Very, very important. If you're using purchase orders at all in either system, understand that the two do not sync together. They do not talk, and I don't think they should. Okay, we should do all of our work in one, not the other. I personally think we should be doing our purchase orders in Builder Trend, but either way, they do not sync over to QuickBooks. Now, with all of this being said, there's five different things that can, can kind of happen. I have my suggestion on what we should use, okay? And that is that we use the first, Builder Trend bills to QuickBooks bills, QuickBooks expenses to BT QuickBooks expenses. I'm gonna explain why I'm gonna demonstrate that as well. All right, so this is my strategy here. Any invoice we receive from a vendor, meaning I have payment terms on it, here's your invoice, pay me whenever you're ready. I could pay it right away, but I might have five days, I might have 30 days to pay it. That should be entered as a bill within Builder Trend, and we should sync it with QuickBooks, okay? Anything that is going to my accounts payable, I should absolutely add it as a bill in Builder Trend. Not in QuickBooks, in Builder Trend, okay? I'm going to talk about the reasons for that in a second. Second point here, any transactional expense, so something that's a credit card swipe, something that happens quickly, enter it as an expense in QuickBooks Online. It will sync to Builder Trend automatically. This is my strategy, okay? Some folks like it to be all initiated in Builder Trend. This to me is the best for my workflow. Again, I'm going to talk about why that is in this video here. Let's get to Builder Trend. I'll show you exactly what I'm talking about. So I have Builder Trend on my left. I have QuickBooks on my right. The first thing we have to do, now again, I'm assuming that we know how to link these two things together. Check out my video on that if, if you haven't yet. Now, after we've linked it, we still have to tell Builder Trend to show my QuickBooks cost. So if I look at my budget over here, I currently don't have um, QuickBooks costs on there. If I go to my job info, this is an option we must click. So in accounting, we've got the connection set up. I need to include costs entered in QuickBooks in the budget. That's essential. So I'm going to save and close that. Make sure that that's checked. Now my budget should hopefully have a QuickBooks expense column in it. Those should be calculated and tabbed into my total. There's my QuickBooks cost right there. Cool. Perfect. I don't have any in there. That's interesting. Um, but that could be just because I'm using a lot of Builder Trend stuff so far. Okay. And we'll add some for sure. Okay. So let's talk about why this strategy makes sense to me. First thing I want to do is add a bill within Builder Trend. Now I have a video on purchase orders versus bills. I think you should be using purchase orders. Okay. I think that's a good idea to use purchase orders, right? But, um, 
here, go to purchase orders right here. I think this is a really good system, but remember this does not link over to QuickBooks. It's not until we create a bill that we have the option to link that bill to QuickBooks. Now you don't need a purchase order to create a bill. Sometimes it might make sense not to have one, meaning we just get an invoice for the dumpster we just rented and we didn't have a purchase order for it. Maybe it doesn't make sense to retroactively go ahead and add it, whatever the case, all right? Now I do have some bills here that I can link over. What's important is that your vendor's gotta be in, in, um, in QuickBooks as well. This you know, placeholder vendor is not gonna be there, so I'm gonna create a different one just to demonstrate this. So I'm gonna create a bill here, and I'm just gonna call this a dumpster. And I'm gonna pay this to Southtown's Disposal Services. And I'm gonna go in here and add my line items. I treat um, my dumpsters as demo. Uh, $450, okay, it's obviously already to the correct job. We have my job code in there and then here's my button to ensure that I send it to QuickBooks, okay? So I don't have to send it to QuickBooks right away and in fact you might have a reason not to. What I like to do is create a lot of bills ahead of time as kind of placeholders and then send them to QuickBooks once I finalize the actual amount. What's important to note is once I send it to QuickBooks, I can't edit it anymore. I'd have to recreate it if I need to edit it. So if you're doing any kind of forecasting out, you want to create some bills to show um, what your out cash flow might look like, you don't want to send it to QuickBooks until you actually get the bill. My workflow is I create the shell of a bill. When I actually get it, we're going to in, uh, add it, add the document here, and we're going to set the due date correctly, and then we're going to send it to QuickBooks as well. Okay, so I'm going to send this to QuickBooks, and... I'll just save this and it should send to QuickBooks on save, okay? So we'll go over to QuickBooks and, and see that that happens, hopefully. Okay, so it says it's been saved and then look here in QuickBooks, it shows as build. So it's currently showing up there. So why don't I go into my cost of goods sold? We'll see if I have a dumpster there for that bill that I just added. And I can group this by product or service. And if I scroll down here, here's my demo material. Looks like that dumpster showed right up, right there, accounts payable. So again, a bill that comes from Builder Trend gets added to QuickBooks is gonna show up as a bill here as well, not an expense. So this is going to show that I haven't paid this thing yet, okay? So I can pay it through QuickBooks or I can pay it through Builder Trend, okay? If I mark it ready for payment here, it should give me a pay online thing. If this vendor is somebody I pay online or I can mark it as paid here. Okay, so in either case, if I mark it as paid, it's going to do the exact same thing in the other system. I'm gonna mark it as paid in QuickBooks. I'm gonna say that I paid it from a certain account. That's the bill that I paid. Save and close that. You might need to refresh this. This refreshes on its own every so often. But if I click that refresh button, it should show that this bill is now paid in full. Okay. Perfect, great. Now the reason I like to use bills in Builder Trend, the main reason is because of the link to the schedule. I think that's the most important part here, okay? A QuickBooks bill is not going to talk to the schedule, whereas a bill within Builder Trend is, okay? I can link this bill to an electrical inspection. That's something I cannot do if I'm using QuickBooks. There's just so much more power behind billing in Builder Trend that we don't get from QuickBooks. That being said, QuickBooks isn't useless when it comes to costs. We have our bank feed. All right, so one thing I don't like about Builder Trend is that in, as far as they are concerned, their expenses, everything's a bill. So if I were to go to Home Depot and swipe my credit card, they would want me to go and create a bill that it was for Home Depot, okay, and then mark it as paid. And to me, that's two transactions, okay? I don't like to do that because it's really, I'm creating extra work for myself. And I used to have that sync go on where I'd create a bill here and then I got to mark it as paid. I'm doing like twice the work for a single swipe of the credit card. So I feel very strongly that I should just track my bank feed, okay? So if I have something coming through um, a credit card, something like tools here or whatever, I'm gonna use product or service actually. So if this is like demo materials, I'm gonna record it right here, and I'm gonna record the customer right here, okay? And that is how I'm going to record that whole situation. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. Okay, so I've just recorded that to the, the um, project. Let me see if that hit my books on the QuickBooks side. There's Harbor Freight right there, that $20 shows up, okay? And that's so quick and easy, and I, and I still have a system for, for my team giving me the receipts and all that, 
Okay, and now in QuickBooks, that's gonna show up on uh, my budget, hopefully. Now it does take a minute to kind of sync over. So it might not be here yet. Let's see here, let me collapse demo. Yeah, it's, it's here already. Okay, so it's actually really quick and, and awesome. All right, so that shows up, it's right there. Okay, and you can see how quick that is. I don't need to track it to a due date. I don't need to track whether I paid it or not. It got paid with my credit card, it's done. I'm done with it. It matches to my bank transaction and that flows in nicely. That being said, notice I don't have that much information here. Okay, so I like bills a lot. I think that bills are more valuable from a just giving us more information about the, um, the whole, the whole project and again being able to link to the schedule i think it's valuable to use bills as much as possible within builder trend but when we have these transactional expenses it's just not a good use of our time right so my rule again is anytime we have the option to pay now pay later whatever here's your invoice record the record the fact that we have the expense record the bill in builder trend do that and keep it there manage accounts payable in either builder trend or quickbooks doesn't really matter the transactional expenses don't waste your time create them in quickbooks get rid of them um, mark them done and they'll, they're going to flow in nicely. And again, have a maybe a goal to have most of your uh, items hit accounts payable. It helps for cash flow purposes. Certainly, you guys going to Home Depot, you know, 50 times a day is not a good thing either. Can we get our materials in a bulk order from a supply house that we're, we're doing invoicing in terms on? That'd be a better idea. So it can be a goal of yours, but we're going to have these expenses no matter what. All right, that, I feel really strongly about that. Let me know your thoughts, questions, and of course, if you have a different way of doing it, that's fine as well. Some of you out there are probably just doing everything as uh, bills and BT. That's okay. To me, it just doesn't seem like it's worth the effort. Let me know your thoughts. Can't wait to hear your comments. That helps, again, inform my next videos. We're gonna keep building this thing out. There's a lot in Builder Trend to get to. We're still just scratching the surface, all right? I will see you on the next video.